Another famous scholar, he was an alcoholic. He was addicted to alcohol. He had no education whatsoever, no manners whatsoever. He was one of the worst people, the worst youth in his community, in his town. And one day, he was drinking alcohol with a group of his friends and he had it. He was the only one who would hold the bottle in his hand in public and drink. This is how shameless he was. This is how low his level of morality he had at the time. So he saw that group of people, people gathering around one man who was on, on his donkey. A huge number of people gathering around him. They seemed to respect him, speak to him, and everyone wanted to, ha wanted to converse with him. So that created some curiosity. He wanted to know who this man is and why these people are so keen to speak to him. So he went there and he came close to that man and he held, oh, he stopped the donkey. And he said, who are you? This is how shameless he was. This is, it's that kind of character that he was. Who are you? People around said, this is a Sha'bi. This is an Imam Shabi. He said, who's a Shabi? He said, who's a Shabi? What does he do? They said, he's a Muhaddith. What does it mean to be a Muhaddith? They told him he's someone who narrates the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He memorizes it, he teaches it. That's what he does. He said, okay, if you are a Muhaddith, then narrate one hadith for me. Give me a hadith. Now this Imam, and that's what the people of knowledge, oh, this is how they should be. He could read the situation and he could read that man. So he wanted to give him something suitable for him. So he narrated the hadith to him. From a companion, Abu Mas'ud al-Badri, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إن مما أدرك الناس من كلام النبوة الأولى إذا لم تستحي فاصنع ما شئت. Reported a hadith from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that he said, if you don't have shyness, if you don't have this quality of bashfulness, then you can do whatever you wish. Because there's nothing to stop you from doing shameless things. That moment, the heart of this man was open. So the word went straight into his heart. And after that, he decided to change. He decided to change his whole life. So he left his past behind. And he went to the famous Imam, Imam Malik ibn Anas, the Imam of Medina. He went to him and he studied under him and he learned hadith from Imam Malik. And this man, this very man who was an alcoholic, is the teacher of Al Bukhari and Muslim. He became the teacher of Al Imam Bukhari and Muslim. His name is Abdullah ibn Maslam al Qa'nabi. Famous, one of the most famous scholars of hadith, was an alcoholic was someone who had no manners whatsoever, no respect for anyone, that he would drink alcohol in public. And when he studied for long years under Imam Malik, he said, I need to see the person who was the reason for me coming to this way, to guidance. So he decided to travel to Al-Basra, where Shabi was. So he goes there, as soon as he arrives, he finds out that Imam Shabi had already passed away. What is the lesson that we take from this story as well? That life is about change. So it's your mission, it's your responsibility to change and never want or never wait for anyone to change you. It should be your own thing. And if you were to look at the life of a Muslim, Consider the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the life of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
the lives of the great people in the history of Islam, the great scholars, the great leaders. What were they doing? They were doing two main things. Changing themselves and changing others. That's what life is all about. You spend your life cultivating yourself, growing your spirit and your heart, your knowledge, progressing and helping others progress and grow. That's the story of life. And if you think that change is impossible, which is the case with the majority of us today, we feel helpless. We think that circumstances will change us. But you might wait forever. What will you say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment? The world will not change until you change. Because this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the world together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma biqawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Indeed, Allah does not change the state of a people until they have changed what's in themselves. When we see the Muslims suffering today, in all Muslim countries, until we change ourselves, until we are willing to wake up for Fajr and come to the Masjid, until we are willing to give up our bad habits, until we are willing to dedicate some of our time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, until we are willing to go the extra mile for the sake of Allah, get out of our comfort zone. Only then things will change. Because everything is linked together. The Prophet ﷺ told that to the companions many a times. That you need to be aware of this reality. This world, this universe is connected together. You fall in a sin and you will see the consequences of this. Could be 20, 30 years later. Or maybe it will affect the Ummah in another corner of the globe, in the globe. You don't see it, but this is how the dynamics of this world works. Why was the Prophet ﷺ sent to this earth with this message? What did he do? He changed the people. Because the Arabs at that time, before the message was given to the Prophet ﷺ, were the lowest Ummah. Divided amongst themselves, killing one another, worshipping stones, doing filthy things. Yet when the Prophet ﷺ came, 23 years they became the Ummah number one on earth. And the momentum was still there. And the Muslim nation, Muslim Ummah expanded all over the globe, from China to Morocco to Spain. All of this was because of the change initiated by the Prophet ﷺ. We still live on that legacy, on the remains of that legacy. We still live on that momentum. So we need to take life seriously. You need to wake up. Wake up from the state of heedlessness. If you feel good about yourself, that you pray a couple of prayers a day, Oh, I pray the five daily prayers, but you do different things. You're happy about that. You're proud about yourself. Wake up to the reality that no matter what you do for the sake of Allah, it's never enough. You should grow day in and day out. You should be growing. The moment you decide to stop, you're, you're being drawn downward by shaitan. You need to wake up to the reality. Don't say, oh, I give sadaqah. I give a hundred pounds a year every now and then. I pray for the sake of Allah. I fast Ramadan. What, what more than that does Allah want from me? No matter what you do, it's never enough. Because you can never pay Allah back. You can never reach the real state of thankfulness that Allah truly deserves.